Hey, what goes great with Liberty, guys? Alcohol. But what's second best? Coffee. You nailed it. We got a brand new Morning Roar line of coffee through Anarcho Coffee, which you can find at lionsofliberty.com forward slash coffee. But even better, if you're a Pride member at the $10 level or up, you get 15% off every order. That's on top of all the other great content you get. Conspiracy Corners, Degenerate Gamblers, Do Nothing Man episodes. And not only that, but you'll also get access to the Legion of Liberty Doom. So join today at patreon.com forward slash Lions of Liberty. Welcome to Electric Liberty Land here on the Lions of Liberty podcast. Your weekly shot of culture, comedy, and liberty with your host, Brian McWilliams. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Electric Liberty Land, episode number 119. I mean, you can find all the show notes at lionsofliberty.com forward slash ELL119. You may notice a little more echo on the episode today because the uh, makeshift studio that I record out of used to have hardwood floors. And uh, you might remember me talking about how I had to truncate last episode because I was moving stuff and putting in new flooring. Well, we did that. And the downside is that the new flooring seems to have the echoing and reverb properties of some sort of goddamn snare drum. So I put down blankets on the floor and all sorts of shit. But until I get this figured out and uh, buy another rug or put some more sound absorbers in here, it might be a little more echoey than you're traditionally used to. Also, we're going to be playing the always fun game of what is wrong with Brian today. And this morning... In a happy coincidence, I was jumping rope, trying to burn some calories off. I just ran to my little patio here, doing some high, stepping over that jump rope, right? Really could try to get that heart rate up. And my back decided it was just going to seize up on me. So I spent the entire day today eating muscle relaxers, lying on the goddamn floor, just drank myself a little cocktail to try to rev myself up for the show here, try to dull that pain a little further so that I cannot... Uh, just be hunched over weeping into the microphone, but you know, perfect timing because I'm going to be going to Las Vegas on Tuesday morning, recording this on Monday evening day earlier. So the news might be a little staler than usual, but I got to walk around a trade show at the giant convention center in Las Vegas the next two days. So, you know, just an ideal time to throw one's fucking back out doing some nonsense jump rope and looking like an asshole to anybody driving by. Just wonderful. Long story short, guys, really, uh, I'll be honest, I'm not that enthused to do the show right now. I really wish I could just keep lying down, but as always, going to suck it up. Spoonful of sugar. Make this medicine go down. But, you know, it's not going down smooth. Something I'll tell you about. Donald Trump declaring that the Iranian Revolutionary Guard are now, as far as the United States is concerned, terrorists. Yes, they're a terrorist organization, despite the fact that they are part of a uh, country's military. And yes, I know that Iran has funded military operations in the past, of course. Not to say that we haven't. I mean, let's be perfectly honest with ourselves. The white helmets that we fund through the CIA and through any number of other underground government entities, because we don't give them money distinctly and directly. But the white helmets have had any number of terrorist attacks. I believe that they are responsible for probably every single one of the gas attacks that have happened over in Syria. We fund them. We also fund groups that would be called terrorists by their own country's leaders. In Syria, we're funding the revolutionary groups that are over there. We have funded al-Qaeda in the past. I mean, for Christ's sake, if the United States isn't responsible for funding terrorists, I don't know who fucking is. All of al-Qaeda's weapons came from us. But of course, and, all, and ISIS is, and all the weapons that ISIS has also came from us. But no, let's go ahead. Again, biggest hypocrites in the world. Let's go ahead and declare Iran's National or Revolutionary Guard as terrorists. Because all this is, is two-pronged, right? You got Trump last week coming out and saying that, ah, he's totally fine with uh, Israel taking over Golan Heights. You know, a, a territory which the native population was driven out of forcibly so that Israel can take that over. So, yeah, that's great. So now they've got that. And now, predictably, Netanyahu now is saying that he's ruling out a Palestinian state. And he's, he's running for presidential re-election, despite the fact that he's insanely corrupt. 
But Trump's throwing him all the support he possibly can. So now Netanyahu, after being endorsed by Trump in this whole Golan Heights instance, now he says, well, you know what? Forget a Palestinian state. I'm running on a platform of fuck the Palestinians and we're going to annex the West Bank. So the Palestinians who, you know, I was listening to Scott Horton and Dave Smith talk on a recent episode about the whole instance between Israel and Palestine. And then they called them, and I think very appropriately, an apartheid state, which is exactly what it is. I don't think there's any more adequate description of that. But now the Palestinians can look forward to being annexed and then being considered secondhand citizens, which I guess is not secondhand. <laughs> I like the idea of secondhand citizens, though you pass them down to like the, another country. You know, the United States were like, look, we love these citizens when we had them. We had them for a few years, but I think you're ready for them. I think they're a better fit for your country. <laughs> so we're just going to pass them down to you. Wouldn't that be great if we could do that with all the shitty people we don't like and just pass them down to Canada? Here, Canada, they'll fit you. Anyway, sorry, second-class citizens, because as you know, and as I talked about last episode, Israel does not view the people in its country on an equal level. It doesn't matter how long you've been there. It doesn't matter if you've been born in Israel. It doesn't matter if you've immigrated and they were there 35 years. You are still not a citizen unless you are of the Jewish faith. So all these Palestinians get ready to be annexed and then have half the rights that all of the people that are Jewish in that state do. Sounds just fantastic for them, doesn't it? All the West Bankers, good job, guys. Predictable answer from Netanyahu in regards to Trump's move on Golan Heights. But now, in addition to that, you've got Trump saying that the Revolutionary Guard are a terrorist group. And we ask ourselves, okay, is this simply a political play to help Netanyahu? Perhaps. But is this also a response to something that I'm going to get into next, which is the House just passed a bill reigning in Trump's support for the war, Yemen war, right? So they're, they're attacking the president's war powers. It's already passed in the House. I'm sorry, in the Senate. The House had delayed picking it up. Now they've adopted it, which is great. So it's really a slap in the face for Trump. Now he can still veto this, but you can see the writing on the wall. They're trying to rein the president's powers in, the president's unilateral ability to go to war without actually declaring war. So I wonder now, though, because we still do have the Patriots expire, but the uh, whatever the fuck that United States authorization of military, whatever, whatever the bullshit is that Ted Cruz helped shepherd into being uh, under some ridiculous name, which essentially was, here's the Patriot Act back again, still gives the president the power to go across, especially when it comes to the war on terror, to go and start these wars abroad without having to get approval from Congress. So you have to ask yourself, okay, is this just to prop up Netanyahu or is this actually to go after Iran and be able to basically wage war with them under the guise of the quote unquote war on terror. Because this is the perfect opening to do that. If you declare somebody's military, a terrorist organization, and of course there's no checks and balances on that. There's nothing to stop the white house from doing that until they actually repeal and rewrite the UA or the authorization for the use of military force. I mean, this is just, it's an open check and they've called it that before. It's a blank check to go to war with whoever you want, as long as you designate them as terrorists. And the language is so wide open that there's no way to to delineate it and say, well, no, we should go to war in this instance, or no, we should not go to war in this other instance, because the president can simply decide it. And of course, it goes against the very principle that the AUMF was founded on, which is in response to 9-11, and essentially was under the guise of, if somebody comes over here and attacks us, then we can have the ability to attack back quickly. That was the sole purpose of it. Even that, I'm still opposed to. I still don't think it should exist. It should still have to go through Congress. But of course, Congress allowed this bullshit to happen in the first place. But until you have something where we actually have a, a status and, when, and you know, they didn't bother to, to repeal it. They didn't bother. They reauthorized the thing. Uh, there's an even worse version, which I've been trying to find the actual votes on or where the status on for those 10 minutes. And I just gave up because I don't have time in my life to try to dig through government fucking websites, which all blow to figure out where a vote stands on something like this. But Corker, one of the, uh, you know, Bob Corker, he introduced a new AUMF, which essentially expanded the ability of the president to do this kind of thing, to pull these shenanigans, to start wars in which Congress has no oversight. And we're just saying this is like, this is the cancer that spreads from the initial cell that was placed in the body of the American people from 9 11. 
now has grown into a cancer where the president can declare war on anybody, can declare an entire nation's military, a terrorist organization, and essentially go to war with that entire nation on the premise of terrorist activity. I mean, look, the Iraq war was never based upon an officially declared war. That still happened. If there's one place that Trump has been especially hawkish, it's Iran pulling us out of the deal that Obama created, the nuclear proliferation, or not nuclear proliferation treaty, but you know what I'm talking about, where we had oversight and they made deals to, to rein in their nuclear program. And now this, and look, and, and if it is just to prop up Netanyahu, if it's just to keep that piece of fucking corrupt shit in power in Israel, then it just shows you that everything that's been said about the influence of APAC, everything that's been said about the influence of Israeli politicians on America and on the decisions that our politicians make has been proven correct. Because if we get in a war with Iran, who was zero threat to us, less than zero threat to us, they still have nuclear weapons, despite the fact that nukes have been played up, that the fear-mongering has been played up by people like Netanyahu for the past 25, 30 years. And look, if you can't get your nukes in place over 30 years, when I'm pretty sure the half-retarded guy down the street who's got a pension for tech can put together a nuke just using internet knowledge. If you can't get that together in 30 years, you're not a threat. But now, just to support Israel, just to make sure that we prop up Netanyahu, let's go ahead and get ourselves on the brink of war. Let's give ourselves an excuse to start a brand new front for aggression in the Middle East and create a brand new generation of terrorists that may actually try to attack us here at home. None of this makes sense. It only makes sense if, as always, like I was talking about a few episodes ago, you're a believer in the real religion of America, which is the military-industrial complex. So everybody, get on your knees, pass around the Bible, which of course is just a military manual delineating how and why America must drop bombs nonstop and pray to your God. And it seems that America's God that dictates our fucking actions is Netanyahu and Israel. Okay, let's move on. While we're talking about nukes, why don't we talk about uh, Eric Swalwell running for president? He just announced that he was going to be going out there. The same jackass that says that the government has is perfectly fine to take your guns away because the government has nukes. And we'll see how it works out for you guys if you want to hang on to your guns. I... I is, it, is the Democratic Party so inept, so completely blind to their own inadequacies, their own idiocy, that they keep thinking that they have chances with people like this? I mean, look, I know the media is forgiving. I know. They don't want to cover any blemishes that people on the Democratic side of the aisle have. But we're talking about a man who literally, not figuratively, <laughs> figuratively, fucking muscle relaxers, not figuratively, literally in a public forum on Twitter told somebody that if they would not relinquish their guns, the government would use nukes against them. Now, again, I don't want to rehash the whole thing I said episodes ago on this, but what kind of a fucking jackass do you have to be where you're going out there and telling people that the government, which is supposed to be looking out for your best interest, which is supposed to protect your constitutional right, which includes, I'm sorry, Eric Swalwell, includes the right to bear arms, that you will use overwhelming nuclear force to make sure people turn over guns to a government that already is far too powerful. And again, never mind the collateral damage, never mind just the fact that the concept of a government making that sort of threat or a representative of government making so that sort of threat confirms every fear that exists in the minds of people like myself or just generally intelligent people about the overreaching influence of government, about the monopoly on violence, which government holds the ability to murder people at whim and then be able to create whatever narrative fits that their, uh, their position as far as, Confirming that murder as appropriate, as warranted. <laughs> We're watching them essentially attempt to confirm the appropriateness of murder in Iran by declaring their military as terrorists. We already saw that 
Americans can be murdered overseas without ever being found guilty of anything. Never even facing their accuser because Obama decided it was better to have drones go over and just simply drop bombs on people rather than having to capture them, bring them home, hold them accountable in a court of law as is mandated by our Constitution. But no, Eric Swalwell, yeah, doesn't care about that. Neither does the government. Making terrorist organizations in Iran, making sure that those people don't have any sort of rights. Because once you're a terrorist, as de- designated by the American government, you, all your rights go out the window. Guantanamo Bay, we still have plenty of people over there who've never actually been formally charged with anything. They never met with a lawyer. Their families don't know where they are. They never sat in a court to be tried publicly where people can actually see even who's being tried or what the accusations are. I mean, for Christ's sake, the FISA court that approves all of these actions... Now they have, they're the same court that's responsible for a massive spying operation that under, undertook by Obama and his administration because they told him that Trump's organization was working with Russia. I mean, the power of the government, the ability to rewrite reality that our government holds is so prevalent. And this motherfucker thinks he's going to win president. He thinks he even has a shot in hell after stating that they would use nuclear weapons against us. <laughs> Never mind everything else that the government's done that should have people's suspicions raised. All right, wanted to just hit on that real quick. Let's move on to something else. Speaking about government overreach, let's talk about Australia going down the New Zealand hole. Going down the New Zealand hole, mate. They will now criminalize failure to remove violent content from internet platforms, a proposition so unbelievably stupid that even Aussies, as drunk and high on shrimp as they might be, can't stick their heads far enough in a kangaroo's goddamn pouch to shield themselves from the stupidity. Because this has already been passed. Australia's parliament passed new legislation criminalizing internet platforms for failing to remove violent videos and audio. After... An Australian gunman, I didn't realize the guy was an Australian, shot the people up in Christchurch, New Zealand. So under this legislation, social media execs and other hosting providers, ISPs, I I suppose, can be in prison for up to three years and companies can face penalties up to 10% of their revenue if they don't remove content in an expeditious manner. Now, (laughs) what expeditious means? You got me. I don't know. How how fast do you have to, to figure things out if it's violent or not violent? If content's on there streaming live, what's what's the definition of that? Because I don't know. But I, what I do know is that this is yet another step by government to censor free speech, to censor information, and to get in the way of people knowing what's actually going on. Because if we don't trust the government with, you know, as I was saying, with, with the rewriting of reality, which is already happening, with the redefinition of terms, whether those terms are medical, whether those terms are defining who is or who is not an enemy combatant, whether those terms simply regards to who or is not applicable as a citizen of said country to have protections as delineated in the document that the fucking country was founded upon. But now we're going to go ahead and allow representatives, and not we, of course, this is in Australia, but... I, I, no one would be surprised if this kind of thing got put on the table to happen here in America. But these people now are pushing forth bills that have been signed into law, which limit the ability for people to find out the actual information and what happened in any given circumstance. No one can see the potential for abuse here. No one can see how a government could potentially say, okay, well, this thing happened. So now we're going to use this video, which by the way, is criminalized and has to be taken off the internet. If we see you with it, we put you in jail and we find your company. So let's make sure that that doesn't happen. But this content now, they say, well, this content justifies a curfew nationwide because we can't have people uh, walking around after a certain time period, or it justifies uh, prohibiting certain types of speech in public forums. Or it prohibits a certain type of people from gaining access to weapons. Let's say now, because they're already policing social media, right? You need a brand new branch of the government to police social media, except that they're already doing it. So maybe they don't. So wake up to your domestic spying that's going on. But now, you see, we've been policing social media. We're making sure that there's no quote-unquote violent video content being posted. It's criminal. But now... Well, now we're going to police content. We're going to police what you say and what you what you're thinking, what you're doing online. 
And if we see something suspicious, well, that's justification for making sure that you don't have the same rights as anybody else. Let's make sure that we rein in your access to firearms. Let's make sure that we rein in your access to services provided. Let's make sure that we may keep putting you on a special list. And if you're on that special list, well, God forbid, you might be declared a terrorist. And if you're a terrorist, well, there go all your rights. Straight out the window. I mean, this is, it, people laugh at us when we talk about the slippery slope, but we're seeing it play out in real life right now. We're seeing the terrorists when we're seeing government utilize terrorist actions, which they're supposed to be stopping terrorist actions, right? The government, that's what we're told. That's what we pretend it's there for, to actually stop actions of violence against the populace. But instead of stopping any of these actions, what we see is a magnification effect on them, wherein they use these solo instances to justify mass aggression and mass repression of civil rights and the entire populace. It's a wonderful world if you're a government right now. I can't think of a better time in the entire existence of government to be alive. You've got a spying apparatus that exists in which people voluntarily take part in. You've got a mass media, which is completely enamored with the way the government operates and a huge fan of expanding its abilities. And you've got terrorists playing into the hands of government and everything they desire by undertaking acts of violence which justify authoritarian government states. I mean, we're in the eye of the storm right now, guys. It's calm right now, but we are surrounded by a shitstorm going on. And at any minute, we can all be sucked into it. You know, this isn't even hyperbole. I, I honestly think that we are at the precipice right now. So I encourage all of you, take that step back, man. Call a spade a spade. Call this shit out. Tell people at bars. Tell people on social media. Make sure that they know what's happening here. Make sure they, they're aware of what's happening in Australia, what's happening in New Zealand, what's happening in the UK, and how these things tie together. How the government is not opposed to these types of actions because it literally gives them the justification they need to subjugate the entire civilization that they rule over. All right, let's take a break. We don't rise to the level of our expectations. We fall to the level of our training. Those epic words from Archilochus can sum up your ability to succeed or fail in business. I want to recommend Conversation Mat Time to our listeners as a way to hone your one-on-one conversation skills in a role-playing session that can help take you to the next level. During 25-minute sessions, you'll work through the best way to approach that raise, that interview, or that relationship with a practice professional that will provide the confidence and experience you need to get paid what you're worth or take that interpersonal risk you've never been able to conquer. Just like in jiu-jitsu, the difference between a novice and a black belt is mat time train to win visit conversation and take advantage of a free 15 minute consultation just for listeners of this show all right we are back with electric liberty land episode number 119 again all the show notes at lions of liberty.com forward slash ell 119 let's go back in and talk about bernie sanders yes one of the two elderly men that is on the docket for the Democrats, along with Elizabeth Warren. I guess she kind of toes the line between the two. But I'm not going to go into detail about creepy Joe Biden. You know, he's out there. He's running. He is the front runner. If he did run, I feel that Trump would absolutely destroy him in every possible sense of the word. And I'm going to talk a little bit about his getting into the whole reparations parade in just a minute. But before I do that, I do want to talk about Bernie Sanders and his recently stated opposition to -to right-to-work laws. Now, if you're not familiar with right-to-work laws, these are essentially laws that are on the books in states that allow people to not pay into unionist dues, even if they are at a workplace that is predominantly union-run and has benefits, quote-unquote benefits, negotiated by the union. For example, if you are at a factory, you're a car factory line worker, right? The unions negotiated a certain set of wages for the people that work at the car company. You don't want to be a part of the union. Let's say you're a libertarian and you're opposed to the cronyist unions and rightly so. 
So you decide, look, I don't feel like it's being strong-armed into paying union dues and giving up you know, $7,000 a year or whatever the fuck they are. I don't know. I'm not part of a union. To pay for people that are going to essentially work as a mob organization uh, on my behalf, ostensibly. I don't want to pay into that. I'm not a fan. I also don't want to be uh, be obligated to support whatever the union might decide to do in the future. So I'm going to be a solo solo uh, worker. I'm going to work at the same factory. And their argument is that, well, because the union put itself out there and negotiated for all workers, well, you must pay us money, which is an absurd concept on its face. And the fact that there are still states, I think like 26 states have right to work legislation. And the fact that all of them don't is a slap in the goddamn face because there is no organization which a union should be a voluntary group to join, if anything. Of course, they've become much, much worse than that and enjoyed many protections that were simply obscene, allowing them to get to the position they exist at right now. Uh, just uh, atrocities committed against co- uh, company owners, including just making sure that people couldn't bring in or or, uh, or stop union workers from Salty people on their property, essentially. I mean, this is this shit goes deep. But anyway, the right to work law makes sure that these people can still go to work, even though they're enjoying the benefits of the union, they don't have to pay in. Now, Bernie Sanders wants to make sure that everybody has to become a member of the union because, of course, Bernie Sanders is a motherfucking cronyist. And he gets a lot of money from unions. And as such, like all Democrats, he wants to be sure that the unions maintain the power strangle they have over industry in this country. And, you know, he's talking about just on a federal level, which, you know, fuck states' rights, according to Bernie Sanders. On a federal level, he wants to eliminate anyone's ability to be able to go to work on their own without having to pay into this cronious organization. Which, you know, if we're just looking at this as a basic standpoint, right? Why in the world would you say it was justified to give any one group of people a complete monopoly? I mean, we're talking about the Democrats, right, who love to talk about monopolies and breaking up monopolies and how we have to have legislation to stop people from having this blah, 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 and controlling the market wage. But that's only in regards to corporations, big, bad, evil corporations, right, guys? Because big, bad corporations, they come in and they steal all the teeth out of my mouth at night and they don't even weave me a little quarter like the tooth fairy does. But no, when it comes to fucking croniest jerk-off unions... And their hard arm tactics of beating people and forcing people out of jobs and arson. Oh, no, no. Those people are fine, right? Let's make sure that all these unions have a monopoly on the workforce and then can dictate when and where people work, the amount of money they get paid, what their abilities and privileges are within this union system. I mean, it is the most un American position you can possibly fucking take. And these jerk-offs justify it by saying, well, we're on the side of the worker. No, if you're on the side of the worker, you would allow the worker to dictate his own or her own terms in regards to negotiating with their employer. Not insist that you join this blanket mob group. So fuck Bernie Sanders. But of course, Bernie Sanders, and I'm going to wrap up on this. This is going to be, like I said, uh, this uh, I'm doing a short episode. My fucking back is killing me. So, you know, deal with it. But... Bernie Sanders is one of a few different Democratic frontrunners, and they've all endorsed this concept. Bernie Sanders, Elizabeth Warren, Joe Biden, who Joe Biden just went around on his I'm a I'm a horrible white person tour. You know, he, you got to do that because if you're Joe Biden, you might be the front runner now, but you are utterly vulnerable just because you're a straight white man at this point in history. So Joe Biden went on his apology and, uh, and hey, fuck, fuck white people tour. But they all signed on, in addition to Cory Booker and Kamala Harris, or Kamala Harris and uh, Elizabeth Warren, all that stuff, on a committee committing to have, committing to a committee, committing to have a committee to look into reparations, right? Make the, there's a bill on the floor that says, oh, we want to make sure we look into reparations. So, of course, all of these guys are out there. They put on their finest ass kissing clothes to make sure that they line up for the identity politics reparations line and endorse this stupid fucking committee. Which, look, even if you believe reparations are something that we should consider as a society, and I've stated my position on this before, which is that from a libertarian perspective, 
I'm not necessarily opposed to reparations, but within a reasonable standpoint of time. I am 100% opposed to reparations going back 200 years to something where we don't even know what the records are. We don't know what the what the appropriate appropriate amount would be. And also, just consider the context of history. The United States would be taking an unprecedented position to say, okay, we're going to decide to pay out a certain portion of the populace that, yes, went through an unbelievably awful ordeal, which no human being would ever wish upon another human being. But we're going to go ahead and pay this populace out, despite the fact that throughout the entire world at the time, this was a regular practice, right? That doesn't justify it. That doesn't mean that it's okay. But this is something that was, uh, it was a, a period in history. And as stated previously, America's dalliance with slavery was exactly that. It was one of the shortest periods of slavery to happen in any country in the fucking world. Other countries did this far longer. They were far slower to eliminate it. And not only that, but they were far slower to adopt these people into the culture and make them you know, basically go out of their way to even things out over the period of the next I don't know, hundred years since the institution of the practice. And not only that, but you're also talking about the fact that Americans didn't go and commit the act of slaving people. They didn't go and attack people. We weren't invading forces in the past. There were black people and black tribes in Africa that literally conquered and subjugated other tribes and made them into slaves, which they then sold. So, well, I, again, I do not endorse or justify the act of slavery. It is an abomination and a stain upon the soul of, of the country and any any person or family history that took part in it agreed. However, to say that we need to have a special committee to decide whether or not just black people, never mind the fact that slavery in, impacted any number of different races and religions. Christians were, were poor, forced into slavery in droves by Muslims, just FYI. But to say that we need to have this committee just to reward black people, never mind that the Native Americans of this country were completely wiped out, essentially, during the colonization era. But nobody wants to, to talk about reparations for them for some reason. But if you say, OK, we're going to have this committee, we're going to research, we're going to figure out, we're gonna, what are they going to do? Right. At the end of the day, what's the result of this committee for reparations? Well, I'll tell you this much. I don't know what number they're going to arrive at, but I can tell you it ain't going to be good enough. It's either going to be way too fucking much, which is the guess from where I'm looking from. Okay, just, just looking at the political climate that exists today, looking at the absolutely motherfucking insane decisions handed out by juries in civil cases, people giving uh, getting you know, $100 million dollars in these roundup situations or in uh, or any other of, of uh, other accusations or unproven accusations for chemical companies getting a hundred million dollars, uh, a woman getting handed out something like $30 million because she's claimed she was discriminated against in a, a Chili's or something. You can just look at the political climate and you say, okay, well, clearly they're going to go way over the top, which is going to piss a lot of people off. But even then, okay, let's say you have a, a more reasonable number. That you say, okay, well, we should give every black person in America even $5,000 for reparations. Okay, number one, anybody that's a big social justice warrior is going to say it's not enough. Number two, even that number is still an astronomical figure to start giving out to people based upon the actions of 200 years ago. And it comes at a cost to people that live in this country currently that committed no crime, that committed no act of violence or aggression upon these people when they were alive. And not only that, but people that immigrated to this country that had nothing to fucking do with it from step one. And now you got brand new immigrants or maybe even illegal immigrants coming in here. Now their tax dollars are going towards reparations for people where they don't know them from jack shit. They weren't even anywhere near the country. They're probably hundreds and hundreds of miles away <laughs> taking part in slavery that was probably going on a lot longer than America, by the way. But now we're saying that they're on the hook to pay these reparations too because it's not like this money can be derived from, okay, we're, we're only going to give reparations to people, but we're going to take it out of, you know, Johnny Cotton's uh, old, his all the remainders of his plantation. No. How are you going to possibly figure that out? 
So what you're going to have is just a random number generator. You're going to have a massive cash grab by anybody that can possibly find any tiny bit of African-American DNA in their blood or just anything because, you know, hey, uh, people are called African-American in this country when they're not from Africa at all, just happen to be black. But you're going to have just it just like the Penn State and Sandusky scandal where all of a sudden you had you know, three viable people and then 45 people come forward saying, oh, no, me too. You're going to have hashtag me too for reparations, and it is going to cost this country trillions of dollars. So to even entertain something like this is absolutely fucking retarded. And I, I just, it is pure theater to even support this thing. And the only reason they're putting it forth is to get it shot down because they know it'll fail in the Senate. They know they have zero chance of it passing. And then they can say, ah, you see, these Republicans are racists. And hey, maybe they are. I don't know. But I do know that if they actually supported this thing, like is craved by Sanders to prove that he's not racist and that this old white coot, he wants the black people to get some money. And by Joe Biden, who makes sure that, you know, hey, I'm not just about sniffing people's hair when they're not looking. I'm also about giving money out to black people. And of course, it allows Cory Booker and uh, Kamala Harris to double down on their blackness and say that they're fighting for their, you know, people of their past and their whole, you know, blah, 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 blah. Just, it's just... Yeah, it's the epitome of identity politics. It's opening up the, we talked about the Pandora's box earlier for terrorists and how this declaration of uh, declaring an entire military organization as terrorist opens up the Pandora's box for the military to do whatever the fuck it wants and the president to do whatever the hell he wants. Well, this is just the Pandora's box again for opening up for every single disadvantaged group to say that they want reparations in some way, shape or form. Because look, at some point in history, Every culture, more or less, has been subjugated. Every culture has been overtaken and forced to do what they didn't want to do. Not to say that that is okay. Not to say that it's justified. Not to say that we as a culture and a people shouldn't reject it. And we have. Wholeheartedly, we have. But to ignore the fact that this was something going on everywhere, all the time, Throughout culture, it was a period of history that just needs to be moved past. Why are we going to dredge up the ghosts of the past? Why are we going to try to rip this country apart? I mean, look, if this bill passes, right, what's the best thing that can happen? White people now resent black people for getting a, a big payday from the government on their dime for something that is created out of thin air that cannot possibly be calculated. And if it doesn't happen... Well, now you've got black people super pissed off at all the white people saying, oh, well, white people don't want to give us our fair share. And it's all it does, even by introducing this stupid bill, you open up this fucking box. You open up everybody being able to say, hey, why not me? This isn't fair. And again, based upon what? Ancient history. All right, that's going to wrap up this episode. I think I think probably this is the worst episode I've ever done, to be perfectly honest with you, because I'm just not into it today, guys. I am feeling like shit. I am on muscle relaxers. <laughs> Hard to keep my goddamn thoughts straight. So anyways, I'm sure this episode will be cut up and clips will be used against me in the future by some enemy somewhere. But eh, hopefully you enjoyed it. That's it from me, Brian McWilliams, Lions of Liberty, Electric Liberty Land. Always stay plugged into Liberty. And hey, if you're at the NAB show and you see a guy clutching his motherfucking back and hobbling around, come out and say hello. I'll be there Wednesday, the day this airs. I'll be there. Peace.